Hi, Erwan from Motion VFX. With this new project, we will learn how to use transition with drones footage in order to create smooth and creative transition between shots. We will see how to get the cinematic result by building our own look by using MFM look. So let's start with some examples with this final project. For this project, we've used several plugins from Motion VFX in order to give consistency between all the different shots. MFM Look for the color grading, M Transition Zoom Volume 1 and 2 for the transitions, and M Title Cinematic for the titles. The first thing to do is to unify the different clips by adding a global look on the shots. For that, I will use MFM Look as it will give me access to all the tools I need. I will work on the first shot, as all the shots are in log file, I will begin by adding a 3D lot. With MFIM Look, you can use the floating palette to activate the several tools or you can go directly inside the inspector. I will click on the lot button on the floating palette. By default, MFIM Look will apply a 3D lot. I don't want this one, so I will remove it. Then I will select the new one. I can click on several lots to test them on my shot. I will select this one, the brainstorm lot. Of course, you can import your own 3D lot inside MFM Block or import your MLOT library directly inside MFM Block. Now I can modify many parameters. First, I will play with the white balance parameter. It's an easy way to add or remove some tint. In this case, I will remove some green and add a light magenta tint. With the level parameters, I can crush a little bit the black. As you can see, I've got access to some parameters directly inside the viewer. With the basic adjustment, I will slightly desaturate the shot. And film look will offer you to add some off-screen flare with a lot of presets, but in this case, I don't want to add some. I will add some chromatic aberration. I will adjust the intensity. I will also add a lens blur effect. I will increase the value. Inside the viewer, I will change the aspect ratio to convert to a no horizontal effect and not a radial one. I can adjust the softness inside the inspector or directly inside the viewer. Then I will add a little touch of grain. I won't add vignette effect nor letterbox. The letterbox effect, I will add it at the end. If you want to save your look, you just have to click on the Save Preset button, create your own category and name your look. so you will be able to call it back on the future project. As you can see, grading with MFM Look is very easy and very fast. Okay, so the color grading part is done and all the shots share the same look. But we still have one issue as the different shots came from different places. So we need to work on the transition to smooth the switch between each shot. To start, I will add a fade in by pressing Command T. Inside Final Cut Pro 10, there are many transitions, but I will use M Transition Zoom Volume 1 and 2 from Motion VFX. This transition will simulate the camera crash zoom effect. So it will be perfect to create a continuity between each shot. We will start with the Volume 2. Volume 2 mix crash zoom and distortion effect at the same time. For the first one, I will select a simple zoom in transition 
but it will add also some distortion. By clicking on the transition, you can have access in the inspector to some parameters, like the amount of blur, the channel blur, and the prism parameter, which adds some chromatic aberration. For the next cut, we have an horizontal road and a vertical road. To smooth the transition between these two clips, I will use a twirl left transition. as this one will act like a morph between the two shots. We can play with the twirl parameters to accentuate or remove the distortion effect. The next one is more easy, as it will act like a wipe by revealing the second clip in by the middle. Simple, but effective. For the next transition, we'll go from the top view of the road to a perspective view. There is a nice transition for this kind of situation. The spin-up transition will create a perspective distortion. It's like if the drone will change its point of view. We'll jump some transition to go to the cut between the shot of the girl in the forest and the close-up shot. They are not the same girl, but with the right transition we can create some connection between these two shots. I will select a basic crash zoom, but this time I will choose a custom one. With a custom transition we have access to the center point of the zoom, meaning we can decide which part of the image will be the center of the crash zoom effect. In this case, I will move it up to put it on the face of the girl. And check on the second shot if the position is correct. The custom transitions are very powerful as you can decide which part of the image will be the center of the zoom. For the next transition, it is more difficult as the two shots are really different. I will use a crystal ball element to help me to do the switch to the FL tower shot. I will use a bus transition. This one creates a spherical distortion which will match with a crystal ball. In the inspector, I will reduce the zoom blur parameter in order to get a sharp distortion. And also reduce the prism effect. On the next transition, I will use the same custom zoom-in transition as we've already used before and create a quick move below the Eiffel Tower. Here I've done a cut in the middle of the clip and trim it a little bit as the motion was very slow and the clip was far too long. So to create a fast motion, I've decided to use a slide down transition. This one will create a fast motion with motion blur effect. I will add the last two transitions and we are done for this part. I need to add some titles, so I will open the titles and generators library. I will choose the M title cinematic pack from Motion VFX, which contain high end title with very nice in and out animations. M title cinematic includes 50 different titles from different purposes. For the opening title, I will select the number 2, Sunken Mystery, which will match perfectly with the lake shot. I will adjust the duration. And what I really like about these titles is the fact that you've got access to all the basic adjustments directly inside the Final Cut Pro 10 viewer. So you can change the position, adjust the size, and modify the text.
Of course, if you need advanced parameters, you can open the inspector and choose to keep or not the animation in and out. Here, for example, I will slow down the in animation. Depending on the title, you will have some specific parameters, like here with the title distortion parameters, for example. So I will select the second title to add the name of the various places. I will copy this text several times and modify the name of the different places. To conclude with this project and add the last cinematic touch, I will select all the elements and create a compound clip. I will use this compound clip to add some letterbox on the project. So I will open the filters library, drag and drop the M-Film looks effect on it. With the floating palette, I will activate the letterbox effect and I will adjust the ratio. I will check if there is a problem with the different shots. We can see on this shot that the top of the FL tower is a little bit too close from the letterbox. So I can go inside the compound clip, readjust the position of the clip. To polish the transition effects, I will add some sounds, whoosh effects, and the project is done. If you want to see all the transitions, templates and effects available from MotionVFX, only one address, motionvfx.com. To get more tutorials, I invite you to subscribe to the MotionVFX YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Ciao ciao. Bye bye.